This is my Anzac Diary. 23rd of April, 2018. Dear Diary, Today I had a very interesting lesson in history. The topic is about World War I. Do you know how it started? It started when the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie were assassinated in Sarajevo by a young serf called Gavrilo Princip on the 20th of June 1914. I was so sad to find out that Ferdinand's three children were orphaned on that day. On 28th of July 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. The Austrian government blamed the Serbian government for the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and his wife. Russia was supporting Serbia, while Germany was on Austria's side. 1st of August 1914, Germany declared war on Russia. 3rd of August 1914, things became worse. Germany declared war on France. German troops went into Belgium as directed under the Schlieffen Plan, drawn up in 1905. Do you know what the Schlieffen Plan is? It is a plan that was designed for Germany to invade France and capture Paris before the Russians could mobilise. Sir Edward Grey, British Foreign Secretary, sent an ultimatum to Germany demanding their withdrawal from the neutral Belgium. 4th of August 1914. Britain declared war on Germany as the Germans did not want to withdraw from Belgium. 15th of October 1914. A brave Australian female doctor called Isabel Ormiston refused to leave her post at the Queen of the Belgians Hospital when Ostend was overrun by the Germans. She was held as a prisoner of war by the Germans but was released a few weeks later. The King of Belgium presented her with the Order of Leopold of Belgium, the King's Medal for Conspicuous Bravery and Devotion to Duty. 19th of October 1914 Many casualties. About 3,000 Australian nurses went to serve in World War I. Sister Alice Kitchen was one of the 25 senior Australian nurses recruited to join the newly established Australian Imperial Force. By 26th of October 1915, the war had already gone on for more than a year. An adventurous and ingenious young woman from Sydney named Olive King proved to be brave in the face of Bulgarian fire when evacuating patients at Guev Gueli. She only just managed to escape. She was amazingly heroic and was awarded the Royal Serbian Memorial Medal. She also received the Serbian Army Silver Bravery Medal and Gold Medal for zealous conduct for saving many civilians, soldiers and medical staff during the Great Salonika Fire in 1917. Olive set up the first Australian-Serbian canteen in Belgrade in late 1918, followed by a further 17 canteens in other locations selling reasonably priced food, blankets and clothing. In order to protect her goods from theft, she often slept on top of the supplies in railway trucks and wagons. King Alexander of Yugoslavia recognised her humanitarian efforts and personally presented her with the Order of St. Sava and the Samaritan Cross. With her wittiness, heroic action and loyalty, Olive truly represented the Anzac spirit. <sighs> I wish I could be like her one day. 24th of April 2018 Dear Diary, Today we had another lesson on Australian women in World War I. I am increasingly amazed by these heroines' actions commitment and kindness. I did some research prior to today's lesson. I found that despite being doubted for their ability in war, Australian professional women seem to have thrived in war. They courageously endured the horrors of war and wounded soldiers found comfort in them as those women showed that their spirits were equal to those of the male diggers. Dr Agnes Elizabeth Lloyd Bennett from Sydney received the Serbian Order of St. Sava, Cross of Honour of the Serbian Red Cross, and Officer of the Order of the British Empire for her tireless work with the Scottish Women's Hospital in Lake Ostrovo, Macedonia. Dr. Lillian Violet Cooper was originally from London, but later moved to Brisbane to open a practice. 
She then joined the war and was also awarded with the Serbian Order of St. Sava and Imperial Russian Order of St. Anne for her work at the same hospital as Dr. Bennett. Do you know if Sister Alice Elizabeth Kitchen was from Amherst near Ballarat, Victoria? Her commitment and dedication, which she showed even after her legs were scraped by shrapnel, saw her being awarded the Victory Medal and British Campaign and Service Medals. 25th of April, 2018 Dear Diary, last night I did not sleep well because I was so anxious of not being able to get up early in the morning to attend my first Anzac Day dawn service in the city. It was very touching to see so many people gathered together to honour the fallen diggers who sacrificed their lives for us today. I wish I one day could present my poem honouring Anzac at the dawn service. In my own reflection as an Australian born with Indonesian heritage, I was thinking of the Anzac spirit that was carried on in this current era through the work of many Australian volunteer doctors and nurses in the 2002 Bali bombing, where 202 people were killed, including 88 Australians, 38 Indonesians and 76 people from 21 other nationalities. Those volunteers worked relentlessly to save as many victims as possible. Jenny Williams, a Victorian trained nurse who had worked at the Royal Melbourne's emergency department, witnessed casualties awash with blood and water. Burnt people were sitting in chairs being hosed down, while severely injured lay on beds. Others walked aimlessly, stunned, holding their wounds and supporting their friends. The amazing courage and endurance that those volunteers, male and female, displayed was one of the strengths that assisted all who were affected by the tragedy to ensure that they endured the devastation. It is amazing to see how the World War I women showed the Anzac spirit and sacrificed so much to allow Australia to be the equal country it is today. I came up with the conclusion that the Anzac spirit is still strongly present in our current fair society. I am extremely proud to be an Australian. And this is my poem honouring Anzac, World War I Women. It had been a long time since Christmas, but the Anzac women still shone. Fighting their own battle so the boys could all live on. Each time they met with tragedy, they would bow to fate and keep, working in the fallen's memory, saving souls from the deep. They travelled far and wide, meeting many other inspiring ladies. There were cooks feeding thousands with ingenious native tricks, and brave ambulance drivers speeding patients through the thick. These gallant Sanzac women were never, ever lazy. Louise Mack gave many news, writing with a unique perspective. While at home in Oz, some women worked hard to make the weapons. Others strived to take care of over 200,000 return soldiers. All of the country's females made the war their objective. Alas, these stories were long hidden away to deter willing females. But now, we know stories like Olive King's mateship from Sydney to Salonika, or Rachel Pratt's dedication to her patients while wounded, and Pearl Corkill's humorous fear of the royals never fails. One hundred years later, their endurance, sacrifice and courage, in spite of other scoffs, are always perfectly exemplified by the women they inspired. The Anzac women showed the world their spirit. We can see now, the Anzac spirit still burns years after takeoff lest we forget. And these are some of our women heroes who I have chronicled. Sister Alice Elizabeth Kitchen, Isabel Ormiston, Olive King, Dr. Agnes Bennett, and Dr. Lillian Cooper.